Today, whether you're a novice or a grandmaster, odds are most of your chess games are played online. Online chess has become the primary means of playing, whether it's on chess.com, chess24, chessbase, or whatever other server. The ease with which players can be matched quickly with others of a similar rating and across various time controls and variants seemingly instantaneously is truly something we take for granted. Today we will explore the history of online chess and how we got to where we are today. Before the internet, people had to find creative ways to play chess remotely. However, the only options were either through the mail or using carrier pigeons. Yes, you heard that right, pigeons. Imagine sitting at home and a pigeon flies up to your window and taped to its leg is 1e4. Honestly, that sounds pretty awesome. We need to bring back pigeon chess. This is known as correspondence chess and it still goes on, but back then matches could take months or even years to complete. Correspondence chess would be the primary means of remote chess play for hundreds of years until the invention of the internet. As with many other modern technologies, the rise of the internet first began as a research project by the government during the Cold War era. The first internet type system developed was ARPANET which was built by the U.S. government as a means of long-distance communication between government servers without a centralized location. ARPANET would go on to become what we call today the Internet. Alongside ARPANET, there are also other networks developed across the country. One of these is called PLATO, the Program Logic for Automatic Teaching Operations. But hold on, teaching? Well, what started at the University of Illinois as a way for teachers to transmit lessons using a computer ended up becoming a way for students to play games with each other and communicate. There were several thousand of these Play-Doh terminals across the country at various universities. The invention of forums, message boards, online testing, IMs, and online chess in the form of a program called Chess 3 can be traced back to these ancient touchscreen computers. Back then, you wouldn't have a nice chess interface like we see today. Instead, you'd use a command prompt type screen to transmit moves with more advanced systems showing you a chessboard type image. Later on in the 80s, chess video games became available, and in 1983, Atari released Telechess, which allowed two players with Ataris to remotely play a game of chess using their Atari computers, a joystick, and playing over their telephone lines. Although these advancements would allow people to play remotely, it isn't until the emergence of the World Wide Web that we see the first creation of a dedicated internet chess server. Internet chess servers such as chess.com and LeChess allow people to play, discuss, and view chess games online. The first internet chess server was creatively named Internet Chess Server, or ICS for short, and was programmed by Michael Moore and Richard Nass of the University of Utah and launched in 1992. Players logged into Telnet, an archaic internet, and the board was displayed using ASCII text. The early ICS was played with issues such as illegal moves, false checkmates, and so on, but it would serve as the basis of ICSs for years to come and would be continuously improved over the years, adding features like Elo, a graphical interface, and improvements to the bugs. In mid-1992, the server would move to Carnegie Mellon University, and John Chinock, William Kish, and Aaron Putman took over the operation. Later that year, Daniel Sleeter would take over the ICS as lead programmer, overhauling the code and addressing a lot of issues in the system. In 1994, he would copyright the code and turn what was once a free website into a paid membership-only server called the Internet Chess Club, or ICC. Although title players like IAMs and GMs could play for free, members were outraged at having to pay the $49 a year and claimed that Sleeter didn't have the right to commercialize the server since most of his source code was written by other people. In essence, they felt exploited. Nevertheless, he still went on to commercialize it and the site would remain popular with chess enthusiasts and is still running to this day as chessclub.com. ICS was certainly a trailblazer in the world of online chess, albeit in a much more limited capacity. Some of the volunteers who put in work on ICC back when it was free were frustrated with Sleater's commercialization and went on to form their own server called the Free Internet Chess Server, or FICS, which is still operational today as freechess.org. And FICS provided access to all features for free, foreshadowing the current division in approaches by the biggest sites today. Think of it as an early chess.com versus the chess debate. We've also got John Fanning, who was the uncle of Napster founder Sean Fanning, who in 1996 would start chess.net, which was a free server, but it would eventually become a paid site, rivaling the internet chess club. Chess.net's still functioning, but seems to be mostly abandoned and hasn't had an update in ages. In 1997, Yahoo would purchase classic games created by internet entrepreneur Joel Cohn 
Chrome and programmer Aaron Jokip. Following year in 1998, Yahoo Games would launch, which would allow users to play games with themselves or with others in chat rooms and it had group features. Yahoo Games was mostly free and allowed users to join dedicated chess forums, clubs, and it introduced a chat feature. You could play private or public games and the user interface was smooth according to people at the time. The chat was unmoderated and apparently pretty toxic based on comments from former users with a lot of cheaters and no admins, a far cry from the heavily moderated servers we're used to today. Sadly, in 2014, Yahoo Chess as well as other Yahoo games were decommissioned and taken down and the whole site would be taken down by 2016. There are of course some other chess servers such as Play Chess by Chessbase, the World Chess Network was also popular, and Chess Live, which is a subscription-based service affiliate with the US Chess Federation. But for the most part, people were on ICC, Yahoo, and World Chess Network. At this time, online chess is much different than it is today. For many of these servers, you had to download a local client software which provided the UI for playing chess and it connected you to the server. Later in the 90s, you were actually able to play chess on a website using Flash or Java, similar to what we see today. The 2000s is where we see the birth of many of the popular chess servers we have today. Chess.com was launched in 2007 by CEO Eric Albes and partner Jerome Severson after purchasing the domain for 55 k a relatively cheap price considering what it's worth today. And Lead Chess would be started in 2010 as a side project by French programmer Thibaut Duplessis, providing a free and open source option contrasting chess.com's freemium subscription-based model similar to the earlier division we saw in ICC and FICS. Later in 2014, Grandmaster Jan Gustafsson and Enrique Guzman founded Chess24, collaborating with GMs, IMs, and world champions like Carlson, Anand, Zvidler, and Hu Yifan. In 2019, Chess24 merged with Magnus Carlsen's company Play Magnus. Today, these are the three most popular chess servers, and I'll probably make another video going into detail for all of these, but for now, just know that these new servers that we use today really drew a lot on those old servers from the 90s and early 2000s, so we definitely owe them a lot of credit. Anyway, that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe for more chess stories and news. Thank you.